Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about typical sources of error in a science lab with a focus on what happens in a chemistry lab. There are lots of things that contribute to your answer not being completely correct. The general categories of those would be if there is contamination or impurities in any substance, if there is any problem collecting a product that you've made, if there are any assumptions or simplifications you've made for your calculations, a reaction ending early or there being side reactions that happen that were unanticipated, issues with accuracy or precision with your measuring equipment, and consistency between trials. Now we'll look at some specific examples and how those specifically would affect your end results, your data, and your final calculations. So the first category of source of error that we're going to look at will be impurities or contamination of substances. And those could be the substances that you're starting with, your reactants, or the substances that you end with, your products. So for instance, if you were performing a reaction with a piece of metal like this, this is manganese metal, there are impurities here. It's partly reactive, it's partly oxidized. The brown color on the outside is the manganese that's already reacted with oxygen. The silvery on the inside is fresh manganese that is not reacted. And so using this, if you measured the mass of this and called all of this mass a mass of manganese, you would be incorrect because there are oxygen atoms also in this, in the impurities. If you were even going to crush that up and use it, you can see the difference in color between different grains. Different grains are more or less oxidized and would give you different results. If you're using something like steel as a source of iron, steel is an alloy and so it has a mixture of different metals. Though it is mostly iron, there are other metals mixed in that could affect your mass or react differently than iron would. And lastly, if you're using tap water, tap water has other minerals in it that could contribute to things reacting in a different way than what was predicted and cause side reactions and other products to be produced. Impurities in your final product would make it seem like you've ended up with more than what you should have produced. So for instance, this substance here, you can see it's got some different colors, pockets of different colors that shows that it is not pure. And this is because it is a hydrate. A hydrate is something that incorporates water into its crystal structure. And so while you're weighing this and you might think that it's all the mineral or the substance you're talking about, there are water molecules locked in place. There are other substances that are called hydroscopic and they absorb water as well, but they don't incorporate it into their crystal structure. Another source of contamination is when there's a reaction that is going to be filtered. If there were two things that were produced, here I've got salt water and some starch. And you're trying to filter out, let's say, the starch from this. The drops of water that are going to remain in here still have some salt in them. And so if I were just to evaporate this filter paper, there would also be salt particles adding to the mass instead of just the starch. One way to help that is to rinse your filter paper and the product that's caught in it. And so that would be rinsing it with fresh water because that fresh water would remove more of those ions and carry them through the paper so that you have only the starch or your product you're trying to get, the paper and water, rather than any left behind soluble salt. Filtration, another issue with it, is a specific case of one of our general categories, problems with collecting all of a product. Filtration can collect something that is insoluble the word insoluble means that it doesn't dissolve in water, and so you should be able to catch it in a filter. However, 
as we've seen before, the filters still have holes large enough to allow some small particles. And the term insoluble really means mostly insoluble in water. And so a small amount of it will still dissolve in the water and still go through the filter. Another way that you can have issues collecting all of the product would be if you're trying to collect a gas in a pneumatic trough and the gas bubbles through some water because some of the gas might stay dissolved in the water. And last, some reactions give off fumes or sparks. And so if I were trying to react this sample of steel wool with the oxygen in the air by igniting it, you'll see what trouble I have collecting all of my product. And so you can see sparks being given off and some of the product is turning to vapor. And so if I wanted to weigh how much of this dark gray substance that I'm producing as the iron reacts with the oxygen in the air, that would be a source of error because these little sparks are pieces of it that I cannot measure and the vapor is part of it that I cannot measure. Looking at this, it brings us to another issue Notice the different colors. And so this indicates that it's not a pure substance. This is because the reaction stopped early. Though there is still oxygen in the room and in the air, the reaction stopped early and I did not get as much of my product created. No matter how much I do this, it is not going to react 100%. The observation that you would make in a lab like this would be observations about the color because color will tell you if a substance is pure or not. Another general category of error are assumptions that you need to make so that your calculations are a little bit easier. We had done this earlier in the year with our Penny Isotope Lab. We had made the assumption that all of the envelopes weighed the same and we made the assumption that all of the pennies made before 1982 had the same mass, and that the mass of all of the pennies after 1982 were all exactly the same. That helped us, but it was not a valid assumption. In physics, they will often describe things like rocks as perfect spheres, that is an assumption, and rocks in real life do not roll like a perfect sphere. In chemistry, we may assume when we do a calculation that a gas sample is at standard temperature and pressure because it makes the calculations easier. However, we know that that's not true and the results may be off because of that. In an experimental design, sometimes it's not possible to have consistency between trials. We saw this with our group one and two metals lab, that it's very difficult to try to get the same mass of a piece of magnesium and a piece of calcium and a piece of sodium and potassium and lithium to react them all. And so those masses were different. There were inconsistencies between the mass of the metal and the amount of water used between those trials. And so we had to look at relative speed and make more observational data collection. Lastly, we'll look at some equipment limitations. The equipment limitations really are just because you're not going to have enough significant figures to have meaningful data. You always want to have at least three significant figures for qualitative data for analysis. And if your measuring equipment will not give you three significant figures, then any small variation in estimates can throw the results wildly one way or the other. Now let's say you were doing a lab where you were going to be reacting a certain mass of aluminum foil with some acid to measure how much gas it creates. And this were the pieces of aluminum foil that you were going to use. Now this, because it's such a small piece, is only gonna give you a mass that has two significant figures. And remember that this is an estimated digit. And so this really could be an eight, it could be a nine, or it could be a seven. And those are a really high percent of this overall value that it could be different. And so we don't know what the true value of this with enough precision that we would get decent results or reliable results. And so what you would want to do in this case is you would want to use a larger piece 
at least 0.1 grams so that you could have those three significant figures that are required for a consistent result. All right, I hope that's been clear enough and helped you see that there are other sources of error that you should include and not say things like human error from now on. Remember those things are generally the impurities in what you're starting with or what you've produced, issues about the reaction stopping early, issues about collecting a product that you've created through a reaction, assumptions that are made, issues with your equipment or the size of your sample, and consistency between trials.